All right, so I just got over seeing Spider-Man No Way Home, and the whole time while I was driving home, the only thing I could think about was Marvel. How how did you do this? How did you make a movie that was one of the darkest MCU movies ever, and it was probably one of the best comic book movies ever, and it was probably a little bit better than Endgame? I mean, how? How did you do this? How did you possibly do this? How did you do it? I want to pick up right there because I was pretty surprised at how dark this movie was from the jump. I really thought Infinity War and Endgame really had so many stakes and were obviously pretty dark for a lot of different reasons. We had characters dying, we had this build up from all these movies before, but somehow they managed to make this Spider-Man movie a little bit more dark than that. So this movie literally picks up from the end credit scene where everybody finds out that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And from the opening scene, it's pretty clear that it's gonna suck to be Peter Parker with your identity as Spider-Man being out there in the world. All these bad things not only start happening to him, but they also start happening to the people around him that knew he was Spider-Man in the first place. Since this is a non-spoiler review, I don't want to go over the plot too heavily or any type of synopsis for the movie because any tiny little slip-ups will give away the entire movie, so I'm just going to stop there. If I got to be honest with the pace of the movie, it kind of dragged a couple of times, but ultimately it was a pretty much flawlessly paced movie. So talking about the legacy villains from the original Sam Raimi and Amazing Spider-Man movies, they're actually better than the original takes on all those characters. William Dafoe absolutely stole the show as Green Goblin. I was actually surprised that he was way more menacing in this movie than he was in his original version. Jamie Foxx reprises his role as Electro and he actually feels like Jamie Foxx. That's the one major issue I had with their take on Electro in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is that Jamie Foxx has his own independent character that comes with him when he plays characters in movies. If you've ever seen a Jamie Foxx movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He brings his aura and kind of characteristics to every character he plays in movies and he does that very well in this movie and he didn't do it so well the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Alfred Molina as Doc Ock was truly amazing. I enjoyed seeing him again because he really did a good job in Spider-Man 2 and he kind of topped that a little bit in this movie. Sandman, Lizard, I could keep going on about these villains. They all were really good and a lot better than their original takes. Outside of legacy villains, Doctor Strange was truly amazing himself. The one spoiler or non-spoiler thing I will say is that the fight scene between Spider-Man and Doctor Strange is all Doctor strange -y. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. We got all the things flying around. We get the mirror world. It's cool. Every time I see Doctor Strange on screen, I think he gets better and better and I honestly like him even more as a character from this movie. It goes without saying at this point that J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson needs to be in every single Spider-Man movie going forward. He's absolutely amazing and I love having him in this movie. I'm gonna say this, the real stars of this movie were MJ and Aunt May. Up to this point I really didn't know MJ or Aunt May all that well because Aunt May really didn't get a lot of screen time outside of a few things with Happy in the last movie or whatever and then MJ was kind of starting to become a character but she was kind of recluse so we didn't really know much about her as well. All I can say is that they're both thrusted into the limelight in this movie. You learn a lot about them and ultimately I think they really shine in this movie. Humor, you know what to expect from a Marvel movie at this point. It was pretty dang good. Just a heads up, there's two end credit scenes. There's one in the middle that's pretty cool and also kind of weird. I don't know. I'll talk about that in my spoiler review. And then there's a second one is actually a trailer for an upcoming Marvel movie, which was pretty awesome to see. There's just so much more I want to tell you about this movie, but the one thing I'm going to tell you right now is you need to make sure you run to theaters to see this movie because if you are a super superhero fan, a Spider-Man fan, or whatever you are, you want to see this movie because if you thought Endgame was good, you're in for a surprise. Spoiler review about Spider-Man No Way Home coming out in a couple of days and I can't wait to talk about this movie in full depth because it's crazy with how much they put in this movie. But until then, we'll see you next time.